All right, do we have our communications all going here? I think so. Okay, good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. All right, so welcome to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, November 17th of 2020. And first on our agenda today is Mr. Mike Clausing, our Jackson County Assistant Engineer. Good morning, Mike. Uh, the first thing I have is a couple of right away from this. One is for Keith Selberman in uh, Bellevue Section 9. It's uh, on Seabury Ridge Road. Uh, the site distance from that's the door. Do that. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the driveway permit farm entrance for a Heath Felderman, Section 9, Bellevue, Sheverding Ridge Road. As presented, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, next I have an entrance permit for a Jim Kinney, uh, Moore Township, Section 25. It's a field entrance on the east side of 36th Avenue. And that's the board to approve that. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the entrance permit for Jim Keneef, Tatey Moore Township, Section 25, for a field entrance on 386th Avenue as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Next, I have the uh, Rural County Transportation Program um, agreement with uh, the City of Lamont. Um, I'd ask the board to approve that. And this, uh, Mike, was submitted last year, correct? Is that when that was submitted to that this, we approved? This is for the current year. Yeah, yeah. but it was submitted. The, I mean, it was scored basically the last time we went through the whole, yeah. Is there a down the line? No? Uh, there probably is, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I can look at that. I'm just curious. <clears throat> I have a motion of approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the RCTP uh, project agreement for Lamont, uh, for the city of Lamont as presented. All those in favor, well, it was previously approved. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, next, we have a funding agreement with the Iowa DOT. They're uh, repaving. Uh, I was 64 from Monmouth over to Wyoming. And uh, when they do that, the, the counties have the option to pay farther up on the gravel roads at our expense. The DOT would, will only put like a 10 foot fellow down there. But what uh, Jones County and other counties mm -hmm. have done is it's gone back, I think it's like 100 feet. And then at, that's at the county expense. And uh, Jones County is doing theirs, and we have a shared road there with First Avenue. Uh, with Jones County, and we requested that we would go along with that. So we have a funding agreement for that. We ask the board to approve that. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the funding agreement with the IOD, Iowa DOT, um, as presented. Any further discussion? Um, I know they did that on the project we did last year from Springbrook to Highway 62. Yeah, we've been, we've been doing that on a lot of our asphalt. So to me, that makes it really nice as far as snow clearing and, and to make that uh, intersection much more safer in the winter time also. Right. Don't get so much gravel. On yeah. You don't have the gravel right on the intersection. Yep, that's for the sure. Motor patrol isn't down there trying to blade right up along the edge of this, the highway. We, and that. Yeah, we do the same thing. It's mostly where you have that interface of the asphalt and the gravel. Instead of being right off the traveled way, now it's yeah. 50 yeah. feet off. It's yeah. a lot easier. Lots so it's really, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and you said there's only one of our, we only have one road from there to Vermont to and Jackson County. Right. Well, 12th, there's 12th Avenue that's actually inside the city of yeah. Monmouth, so that would be their responsibility. Um, this is a shared first avenue there, right yeah. on the county line. Yeah. Um, okay. They're estimating it's going to be about $3,000 or $2,000. Uh, minimal expense for the improvement that does through. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. All those in favor say say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, next I got some uh, utility permits. I got Coconut Valley Cooperative, uh, Coconut Section 20 and 21. They want 
four along the East Ditch of 233rd Avenue for about 370 feet. Can ask the board to approve that. Can we put, approve all of Maquoketa Valleys or can we do them all one at a time? You, I think we've done them all. I just do them all at a time. Okay, and yeah. then uh, the second one is uh, the Maquoketa Valley, Fairfield Township, Township Section 4, and Van Buren Section 6. They need to build a new power line uh, across from 86 to 11, 400th Avenue. And then the third one is for Maquoketa Valley in Monmouth, Section 7. They need to install poles in the aerial road crossing at 417th Avenue. We ask the board to approve this. So moved. They're recommended for approval. Yes. I have a motion and a second to approve the right of way utility permits for Maquoketa Valley as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose nay. Motion carried. Said before the meeting, the 341st uh, Street Bridge is open. That's the second day labor bridge we did. And the other one, um, 364th Avenue, we got poured on Friday and should be open by the end of this week. And then the only other construction project that we have that we need to do yet is uh, there's a slide over on the uh, Springbrook Highway um, out there by Buddies where they have the pumped in. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a slide behind the guardrail there uh, by the, the triple box culvert. Um, Jake Sheckle's going to fix that for us. Sounds like it's going to be next week when we get started on that. Weather well, sounds good yet this week, so hopefully that holds off a yeah, little it's bit. Supposed to be in the yeah. after 60s. Yeah. This, I would Ground won't be froze anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, good. I appreciate and uh, really uh, acknowledge that the work you did with them bridges and got them done and they got them finished in a timely manner i know high you know the uh high bridge and um a couple other ones we did 45th street and uh, mill yeah road. that's <clears throat> mill creek road was a really nice project finished and uh, appreciate that so that's moving forward <clears throat> so i had i had somebody come up to me and say and I'm, I'm really glad that you guys finally got smart and started putting concrete decks on, <laughs> on the bridges I says, well, we've talked about it for years, but mm -hmm. never got the, not, never got it, never got the. Well, for the difference in cost yeah. and, and yeah. the maintenance and the longevity. Okay, sure, appreciate it. Todd, you got anything to add? Uh, Todd Keeney is also our interim county engineer is with us today from Clinton County. Uh, no, I just, I was going to talk, I got a lot of things I want to go over with Mike. I want to go look at some of your used beans. We might be in the market for buying those. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know an auctioneer that can auction them off for you. <laughs> we won't need an auctioneer. Time on that. And then uh, I'm working with Stacy and Mike, and the goal they're they're doing the line share of putting the budget together. Then I'm just reviewing it with them. So when I'm done with that, when when David takes over, he should have a pretty fully formed budget. Uh, budget so. All you would really need to do is kind of become familiar with it unless they want to make some changes. And then the last thing I was going to bring up to you guys. Um, so I don't know what you guys have for a policy for, for, for secondary road maintenance guys, uh, like for snow and ice. Uh, but we, like, like in Click County, we just updated the policy since they're considered essential workers now. Uh, if you have guys like quarantining, uh, they're, they're not sick, they haven't tested positive, they don't have symptoms. If they're just quarantined because they had an exposure, or we implemented a policy where if we had a snowstorm and we needed people there to get the roads open, we would call those people in, even though they're under quarantine. And then as soon as they're done performing, you know, snow and ice removal, mixing salt saying, basically wrapped up, ready for the next snowstorm, we would send them home and they continue to quarantine. And if they get overtime, they get overtime, all that stuff. But uh, I don't know what you currently have for a policy, but we've augmented ours to allow us to do that. Well, I think that makes perfectly good sense. Well, at this day and age, when things are going the way they are, I think we need to update it, yeah, to, to include that. I mean, basically you're saying they're quarantined to that truck or that piece of equipment. They come in. And it's fogged or disinfected when they're done with it and move on, yeah. yeah. So right now, our current policy would be like, if you're supposed to quarantine, you quarantine. You don't do anything else. That's right. 
but so this this would change that that if you're needed for emergency snow and ice removal you could come in work perform your job be isolated in your piece of equipment when that's done then you would go home and continue your quarantine so I think it would be smart to include that. I think we'd like to update ours too, Mike, if we can do that to that some point. But you, so, you know, your isolation is you have it. So that's our 10 day isolation. No, no. Not that you have it. You're just isolating because you've been exposed for whatever reason. Well, that's so. not what I've been told by the Department of Public Health. So isolation, when you're in isolation, my wife was in isolation. Quarantine. So she had it. No, I was in quarantine. I'm talking about quarantine. Okay. So there's two different. Right. So if. This would not apply to if, like I said, if you if you tested positive or if you have symptoms, you would not get called in. Correct. This is for people that are quarantining that have not tested positive and do not have symptoms. Correct. If you fit that category, then you can get called in. Yes, that's actually the quarantine. Yeah. And I, I'll just email uh, Becky, maybe, and just have her. I'm assuming she would be the one to update that. Anyway. Yeah. It'd be very similar, I'm assuming, to what your sheriff's department has now, because they were essential employees from the get-go, from the start of the pandemic. So, so that policy may have changed in the in the sheriff's department already. You mean, as far as how so, they're called uh, in or called their back, or when you know? the governor they considered like law enforcement essential employees from the start, so they were under a different uh, rules protocol right. and rules. <laughs> And secondary road and everybody else were not considered, but now they've changed that leading into wintertime Winter. operations. Now Which makes sense. Essential. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, no, we would love to have that updated. If you could work with them with that, that'd be a move all forward. Now we know where we're at, you know. Anything else, gentlemen? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Is there any visitors or citizens that uh, have any comments or input at this time? Hi, this is Cheryl Curl. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. How are you guys? We're good. 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 I um, worked in healthcare for over 40 years here at the local hospital. And my comments relate to highly encouraging you. I see on your agenda, you have discussion and action regarding a countywide face mandate, face mask mandate. Yes, ma'am. And looking at Jackson County infection rates, it looks like we have been definitely trending upward with our percent of currently infected. And with the 24 hour positivity rate yesterday being at 38.89%, and our cumulative positivity rate being at 20.33%. It just is woefully awful here in Jackson County. And everybody uh, that I've talked to who's in the healthcare field yet, friends and family, they are being taxed to the max. And so I am asking that you uh, serve as the county leaders and take strong consideration in mandating the fates uh, mask mandate. Okay, we certainly, we certainly uh, respect your input and uh, we would hope if there's other input here at this time, considering this same um, discussion that we come to it on our agenda and we will let everybody have their piece, if that's okay. Thank you. Definitely appreciate all the work you do. And Thank stay safe. And we to. certainly appreciate the work you do. I guess and we also Th have to re realize that the governor has made a proclamation and uh, a mandate. Nice. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to follow that as well. So we'll keep that in mind as we're moving forward because we know that we have a problem and we want to do everything we can to try to assist the people to be safe. Mike, do you want us to, um, if we have comments about a mask mandate, do you want to wait us to wait for that item? I, I would like to, until uh, we get to that, part of our agenda that we uh, follow our agenda as it's listed. Okay. Yeah, we, we're, if you got time. Yep, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, anybody else, uh, any citizens or public or anyone from the public have comments on anything else other than the mass mandate? All right, if not, we will move on to uh, Lisa. 
our county auditor. This one, thank you. All morning, right. I just need a motion to approve the minutes of the November 10th, 2020 board proceedings as written by Auditor Smith and authorized publication in the official newspaper. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes of November 10th, 2020 board proceedings as written by Auditor Smith and presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. See how fast that that's works? That's the briefest you've been. That's, that's, it. That's, huh? that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We need more of you. No comments. We need more of you. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Yep. Luann, would you like to present uh, your business for today? Do we have um, Sarah on the phone or on the, is Sarah? She said she would be on the phone when we talked about it. Uh, we need to let her, yeah, we need to let her know that we're a little early here if we're going to talk about it because she wanted to be on the. I'll have her join Trying to be about as brief as Lisa was. <laughs> no, you might, time, you might yeah. get some more input. Take your time. There we go. Okay. We'll just wait a second. Do you have to let her in or can she just get on? All right. So we're joined by uh, Luann Gokey, our executive assistant. And I, I have to apologize, I got ahead of myself um, to start the meeting with us today. KMAQ, the newspaper, Kelly is with us. Uh, again, Luann, our executive assistant. Lisa, our county auditor. Larry McDevitt, Jack Willie, myself. Mike Stein is your county supervisors. I apologize for that. I think, I hope that everybody knows us all and welcome everyone anyway. I apologize. Go ahead, Luann. Okay. Calendar for the week. Uh, six o'clock tonight is Jackson County Economic Alliance by Zoom for Jack. And also at six o'clock is the Conservation Board meeting, also by Zoom for Larry. Wednesday, November 18th at 9 a.m. is an IRIS meeting by Zoom for Larry. At 1020 is the Iowa State Auditors Town Hall meetings via Zoom for any and all of you, I believe. At three o'clock tomorrow afternoon is Jackson County Compensation Board meeting by Zoom. And my name is on there because I have to run the meeting. At four o'clock tomorrow afternoon is ECDC and ECIA um, executive and council meetings by Zoom um, for Jack. And at six o'clock is the Jackson County Water Trail Committee meetings by Zoom for Larry. Thursday, November 19th at 9 a.m. is the Housing Trust Fund meeting by Zoom for Mike. At 11 a.m. is the CSEI meeting by Zoom for Jack. And at 6.30 p.m. is the Limestone Bluffs RC&D meeting by Zoom for Jack. Friday, November 20th at 9 a.m. is the WIOA Workforce CEO Office Hours by Zoom for Jack. At 1 p.m. is the DCAT meeting by Zoom for Mike. And at 3.30 is the Mississippi Valley Workforce Appeal Conference Call for Jack. Monday, November 23rd at 4 p.m. is an Early Childhood Iowa meeting, council meeting by Zoom for Jack. Our next regular meeting is Tuesday, November 24th at 9 a.m. Well, I have today that is, just fills up a little bit. No. <laughs> it's a busy week. Yeah, it's everything in before it's the gonna be a beautiful week. It is almost 70 by Thursday, they yeah. said. Well, the kids would go outside and play football. <laughs> <laughs> when it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Other times they made snowmen. Can't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> change. So the only other bit of business I have today is the mask mandate. And we've already sort of started a discussion on that. But. Okay, so at this time, I, I guess I would like, uh, Sarah, if you're available, maybe just to touch base on that, what we're, what, uh, we're considering. I think most people know uh, the proclamation the governor put out yesterday, um, different guidelines. And basically, uh, Sarah, if you just want to explain how we come up with our proposed resolution. Yeah, sure, Mike. Um, 
So I modeled the resolution that I provided to the board after one that Greene County actually passed, I think last Thursday. Um, it has some strong language. It uses the word shall, and it's actually more, I'd say strict than what the government governor passed yesterday as what this resolution is saying is that anytime you're indoors, whether it's 15 minutes or less or not, um, you wear a mask. And um, um, additionally, I think, um, yeah, that's the biggest, I guess, difference from what the governor did. Um, the one caveat, of course, is that this is a resolution and there's not a penalty provided for it. Um, this language again came from Greene County that it's not intended to be uh, a punishing, a punitive or stigmatizing resolution, but just to assert that the board feels it's the best interest of the community and to keep everyone safe in Jackson County to mandate or require everyone to wear the masks. Certainly. We certainly appreciate that. We also see received a position statement from the Board of Health, our local Board of Health, which basically uh, stated the same guidelines and what they recommended. So I don't know if anybody have a chance to see that uh, position statement. Uh, yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on the mask mandate proposed resolution? Wendy, I see you have your hand up. Is yes. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wendy McCart. I'm the executive director with the Maquoketa Area Chamber of Commerce. And knowing that this was added to your agenda today, um, of course, our chamber works for um, to support our local businesses, organizations, and our community partners. So knowing that this was an agenda item, we felt that it was necessary to reach out to our members and get some feedback from them on, uh, on their feedback on what they think would um, be the best situation here. So we reached out to more than 200 of our members and more than a third of them responded. So we had a wonderful, um, wonderful rate at which they responded. We were very happy with that. So the first question, and I did email this to the supervisors. I'm not sure if you received the full report or not. That looked but like just the report about a 70, 30 percent uh, there were comments all over the board, of course, I read them. Right. So just for the public purpose, I'm just going to go over those first four really quick yes or no questions um, and let you know those responses. The first question would, uh, would you be in support of a countywide mask mandate that would require employees and patrons to wear a mask when inside a business? This would not include a mask requirement outdoors. We had a 68 response saying yes to that and 32% saying no to that. Then we asked, would you be in support of a countywide mandate that would require employees and patrons to wear a mask both inside a business and when unable to maintain six feet of social distancing outdoors in public spaces? Again, same result, 68% said yes, 32% said no. This next one I found interesting. Do you currently require your employees to wear masks while working? Uh, we had 52% say yes, 48% said no. However, our next question when we asked, do you currently require that your patrons wear masks when they come into your business? 69% said yes. So there's more businesses right now asking that their patrons wear a mask when they come in rather than their employees wearing them. 31% request or responded that um, no, they do not ask for their patrons to wear a mask when they come in. So just some interesting notes there. I also spoke with the Dubuque Chamber as a follow-up to see what sort of feedback they were getting from their local businesses and organizations after the city of Dubuque implemented their mask mandate. And they said the best thing that has come out of it for them is they had quite a few businesses that were trying to ask or require that their patrons wore masks when they came in. And this really took the pressure off of them to have to be the ones enforcing that because they could just print um, print post and point to the mandate on their wall that said, you know, this is a city regulation and I want to make sure my business stays open. So please wear a mask. Uh, it took a lot of the pressure off of them. That was the, uh, the main feedback that Dubuque had for me in regards to theirs. So 
Well, there's a fine line, I would say, if you're in business and you're a business person, there's a fine line to stay in business, keep your head above water during these trying times. I've had several calls myself from small businesses and said, uh, I want you to be the bad guy. <laughs> I said, I don't mind being the bad guy. You know, no. I mean, we're not trying to uh, take away anybody's rights or anything like that, of course. Uh, I've heard uh, we just want to be responsible to our family, friends, and, and to the general public. So I guess... I've talked to uh, several healthcare professionals, and if we can keep one of them from not obtaining this uh, terrible virus, it'd be a plus. Uh, same goes for our school system. If we can have one staff member not uh, be infected uh, is a positive. Um, I do have a concern um, that I got a couple calls that I never really thought of myself, and this is our small local EMS services. They're calling and they're telling me, or they're sending me a message saying, you know, a majority of our calls now are related to the COVID uh, virus. Um, so they're getting a little nervous. If we get into a situation where, and mind you, these are all volunteer people. They're all volunteers. So if we don't have that EMS system, if there's an accident for say, God forbid, um, we not we, we may not have personnel to uh, if if they're quarantined we not somebody to respond to that situation. So if we can protect a few, I would think it's our responsibility. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. And the other point there that I just wanted to make on behalf of the chamber is that we've seen a significant impact to a lot of our local businesses here that are now short staffed. They're having to close. They're having to reduce hours, or they're incredibly short staffed and just really working their tails off trying to keep their doors open right now because they have so many employees who are either out positive uh, with COVID or quarantining because they've been exposed. So it's definitely something that, you know, regardless of whether or not we hopefully don't wind up with a shutdown, you know, a lot of our businesses are already there because they don't have another choice right now. All we want to do is try to keep people safe. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not infringing on anybody's rights or, or anything like that yeah and this is that, well, did you have a comment i you're muted oh. i do have a comment um actually um i'm erica barker third ward city council i'm actually um speaking in my official capacity as an employee of the mississippi valley regional blood center uh, we are members of the Makokota Area Chamber of Commerce. We are the sole provider of blood products to over 115 hospitals in the Midwest, Jackson County Regional Hospital um, being one of those um, that we provide blood products to. Um, throughout our region to meet patient need, we need to collect um, at least 3,500 red blood cell donations, 400 platelets, and 200 convalescent plasma donations each week to meet patient need. And we are currently only collecting at best to 3,200 red blood cells. We're only seeing about 70 convalescent plasma. That's the plasma that's treating COVID patients that are struggling to recover. Um, we have a 10% loss in platelet donations because we cannot hold enough blood drives um, due to this pandemic because donors aren't coming in for their appointments or um, businesses are, are canceling their blood drives. This is a public health issue, we all know that. Um, it's my job to see that there are blood products on the shelf when, when you need it, when your child or your parent need it. And quite frankly, we are struggling. We are short staffed due to the um, due to the pandemic, so we are struggling as well, and that affects how we supply our hospitals. So I would highly encourage um, you to support a mask mandate um, that is more strict than what the governor has, has put out. So thank you for your work and everything that you do to protect the community. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Erica, Thank for you. your input yeah. there. And uh, on the positive side of that, I gave blood last week in Bellevue, and they were turning away walk-ins because they were full. 
Good to hear. Good to hear. Positive, positive no, yes. Donna? <laughs> Uh, good morning. Um, I'd like to thank you all for um, considering this mask mandate in Jackson County. Uh, I listened to uh, Kim Reynolds' proclamation last night and think that it didn't go far enough. And after having listened to the um, the proclamation or the uh, what I guess proclamation that Sarah read earlier, uh, I, I think that that's a lot more in line with what we need in Jackson County. Um, so I, I would like to see stronger action than, um, than was presented last night. I'm also concerned uh, about small businesses in Jackson County. Um, I have, you know, personally, I have limited my interaction with people a lot. I go to the grocery store, I go to Walmart, uh, and pretty much nowhere else. And I would like to be able to, um, to use the local businesses, I think it's so important that that uh, we do patronize them through this and to help them um, be able to stay in business. However, without a, a mask mandate, and I, I think that it's a little harder to do that. So I, I want us to be able to support these local businesses, but to do it safely. Um, I would also like to see if this is passed, that it be really proactively encouraged in the papers and on the radio and in person by everyone, because I know that there's a lot of resistance um, to a mask mandate and it, it takes some ed education and um, I think encouragement by people of influence in the county. And so I would like to see that be an added component. And again, I'd like to thank you uh, for your time and for uh, your willingness to uh, look into this more robust mandate. Thanks again. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Um, Thank you. I guess along with um, the proposed mandate, I'm gonna reiterate that we are all responsible for our health and wellness of our friends, our families, our neighbors, and the general public. So again, we've always strongly encouraged um, wearing a mask and social distance. So anyone else would like to speak in regards to a Jackson County mask mandate? Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, uh, Pastor Will Layton. Uh, I'm the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in St. Donatus and at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Lamont. I'm also the chaplain to Lamont Fire and Rescue Department. Uh, I would like to speak in favor of this uh, proposed uh, mandate, and there's a couple reasons for that. Um, I know that a, a lot of the talk goes around that we would like to avoid a lockdown, and of course we all would. I want to remind us that some members of our community are in lockdown. Uh, as a pastor, I'm aware every day that my church members who are in nursing homes and other kinds of care facilities have not been able to see anyone outside of that for eight months now, including their pastor. Uh, and so that's not gonna change until we can slow the spread and, and slow down that community spread. Um, I also would, uh, as a faith leader, reiterate uh, what some of the business leaders said in terms of taking the pressure off, um, sort of leaders of organizations. We do require masks when we are worshiping in person, although uh, currently we are not, um, as of this past Sunday. Uh, and so I could go on with that, but it, I think that others have, have hit a lot of those points that are important. Um, and so thank you all for considering this mandate. Thank you. Thank you, thank Pastor. You. And this is Nick Hockenberry from the Jackson County Economic Alliance. I wanted to uh, maybe offer some reiteration of what Wendy and what I heard Donna say as well. I think part of uh, what, what your proposed mandate does is help clarify and make it easier to communicate to the public, um, you know, in, in a sim simpler terms. Um, what we saw it come out from the governor, while I think it was a good step forward, um, it's led, you know, I've had, I've reached out to, uh, to get some clarification on some exceptions and, and how it should be um, instituted and and all of those things. And I think a, a much clearer voice um, is what I'm hearing out of your proclamation here. And it will offer 
again, what our, what our goal is, which is to keep us from having to go into another shutdown and harm our local economy any more than it already has been. But I will say, you know, even the, the governor's um, steps forward here to, for instance, to close bars and, and restaurants for most service after 10 p.m., that's going to impact our, our economy here and those businesses and the state and our federal legislators um, really need to take that into account as they're moving forward um, for in the state in the new session here and, and for our legislators as they meet again. Thank you, Nick, for your input. I think Donna has another question. Donna, do you have some more? Yes, I just have a question. Um, I'm wondering how this county mandate, if it would have effect on the schools, because the schools have um, each have their their own rules. Um, and having watched a couple of the schools, Bellevue and Maquoketa, there seems to be a difference in the uh, rates of infection for students and staff at the schools. So would this have any effect on that? Or are schools still uh, able to have whatever mandates they choose? Well, I guess my view of that was that they can still in their building, but it's a public building. So Sarah, maybe you would like to address that. Um, technically, yes, I would say that this applies to any public place. So yes, it would include the schools. I'm not sure what Bellevue is doing, but I think Maquoketa does have a mask man. I mean, I think they are requiring masks. Bellevue does too. Well, Bellevue's is a little bit different as I understand it. I could be wrong, but as I understand it, in classrooms, if they have the desks six feet apart, then students don't have to wear masks. You know, I, I personally find that not necessarily real effective. And I haven't checked their cases, I think maybe this week, but they, it looks like they perhaps have more cases than Maquoketa. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just tossing that one out there. Yep. Okay. But apparently Th what Sarah says, it would, it would be include for the schools as well. Yeah. And, and, and again, the social distancing is in our resolution. If you can't maintain your social distancing, of course, then the mask mandate is in effect mm -hmm. as I read it. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one comment here that someone uh, joined us on chat. Um, this is Sarah Jones. She's a member of the Maquoketa community. Um, she's unable to speak because she does not have a microphone, but she is attending this morning in order to express support for a mask mandate. And she wants to thank you all for considering this. Thank you. Anyone else? We thank you all for your input. Yes. I'm sorry. Hi, uh, my name is Allison Simpson, um, and I am a business owner in Jackson County, but I'm mostly wanting to speak as a mom and a daughter. Um, my mom, dad, stepmom, and sister are all nurses in the area, and I've seen the impact that they're experiencing um, without this mask mandate. Um, and I'm just asking to give them some reprieve in the healthcare system. Um, and as a mom, I've pulled my son out of school once again. Um, he requires a nebulizer and he is unable to wear a mask. So just thinking about people in our community that are re relying on others to act, um, I think that the proposed mask mandate that you guys are putting forth will be very beneficial to all of them. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other comments? So, Sarah, if you could, according to the TH, what I read yesterday, the Dubuque County, when they passed their mandate, it did not go into effect until publication, okay. yeah. is that correct? 
that's a mandate. Um, Dubuque did an actual ordinance, so they had to follow the same laws you would for any other ordinance. Um, okay. What I have proposed is a resolution. So if you approve it today, it is um, in effect today. And I, one thing I did forget to bring up is um, I did put a sunset date of April 1st in here. Um, obviously, if you want to extend it, end it early, whatever, you have that ability. But um, I did put an end date in the event that we don't. It, it wouldn't require us to take future action to end the mask mandate um, unless you chose to. And I, I think that's what we discussed yesterday. And I think that's what we should do. I thank you for clarifying the resolution and the ordinance difference in that, that uh, when it would uh, take effect and if we did do so and also the expiration date. Any other comments? With that, I would make a motion to approve our resolution for the mask mandate. I would second. I have a motion and a second to go ahead and approve the mask resolution as presented. Any further discussion? Again, I'd like to reiterate we're doing this for the best uh, to be responsibility to our family and friends and, and to the general public. So please don't call your local board rep <laughs> executive <laughs> assistant with your negative input. My number is readily available. <laughs> so call me if you have some comments or criticism against this. You can call any of us. All yeah, of us, any one of us, yes. So um, I mean, it just makes sense. It's common sense. Don't, don't pass your frustrations on to our assistant. We need her. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thank you all for your input. And thank you. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Okay, Luann, you're still on the agenda. I'll tell him the okay. <laughs> <laughs> you went away and answered the phone on us, so I didn't know if we had anything else. It didn't look like it on your. All right. Uh, next on our agenda is Chandra from ECIA. Discussion on our RTA. Chandra, are you still there? I seen you were there once. All right, seen ECIA was there anyway. I don't know who's there. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see him now. Yeah, here he comes. Okay, how about now? Can you guys I hear see me? I see you now. I don't see you, but I hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I need to open my laptop. Sorry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, there we got you. Yeah. There, now There's we can see face. you. Good morning. Good morning, uh, board. Thank you very much uh, for providing me this opportunity today. Uh, why am I be on the agenda today? Just to check if there are any questions or concerns from Jackson County before we walk into the RTA work session and uh, on 2nd of uh, December. Uh, at the last RTA meeting, you guys did see the information what we provided. Uh, so there are three key points what we want board to consider. Obviously, this is a very crucial time for RTA. Uh, what audition we make, it will impact the ridership. With the reduction in ridership, uh, it's, it will be a, a long-term effect on RTA because it will affect our SC, FTA, and indeed uh, that will make us hurt more in, in the in future. So, so until now, uh, we had this major contract uh, from uh, Head Start that really covered our back. Now with that gone, we got hit of 180,000. Uh, however, we are not asking the board to cover 180,000. Now, you as a board with other two counties, you guys decide how much uh, we need, RTA should get. That's the first question. Second question is how that funding should be distributed. Like is it based on rights and miles or is it based on population? Your call. And third is uh, where, did, where should we use the funding? You should that be only used for coordinator and the uh, free rights we are providing and so on and so forth. And most of this funding will not be used when we have a positive balance. So as you all know. So today I want to see if there are any questions that Jackson County have that I can address before the uh, work session so that uh, you guys can discuss among yourself before we co you come to the work session. So. Uh, no, I don't really have any questions, Chandra. Um, I guess, you know, my thought is that when 
I'm sure you had this conversation with Delaware and Dubuque County as far as questions also. Um, yep. My thought process is that when we get together and have this conversation, that questions will arise, of course. Um, yep. and, and you certainly usually have the answers for them, so. Thank you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have any questions at this time. I don't know if Larry or I don't Jack. Either. Oh, okay. Yeah, when, okay, uh, that's good. Uh, but if there's anything that you need from us, just uh, shoot me an email. I'll be more happy sure. to provide the information. Yeah, no, we certainly know that it's a challenge uh, the way things are going right now. And uh, we, we hope that we can fight through this like everybody else. So do the best we can. Amen. Anything else, Chandra? No, that's it. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. So. Thank you for joining us here today. So, oh, as, uh, I'm sorry, as we are talking to the board, do the supervisors have a engineer on board? They have a what? But they have a county engineer for Jackson County. Yes, we hired one last week. He'll well, start the first. Oh, we have an interim engineer here. Yes, so would you like to speak to him? Oh no, I I, I know Todd is interim, but do you have a did you guys hire a new engineer? Yes, we did. We did. With well, the start okay. date. Uh, David Dreyer. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, obviously, I need to meet with the new engineer and give orientation and all that. So Absolutely. Uh, who should I contact for to get his contact information? Um, Becky, but Becky's not here until Thursday. Yeah, well, he doesn't really start till January, so. He just wanted his contact information, which I think he could have his phone number, well, email. Yeah, I have his phone number. Okay, appreciate it. I'll that. get in touch. With Becky, so. Yeah, January's Becky was not coming. Is January fourth would be his first day unless he gets moved up here from Florida sooner. So we can get you his number, but other otherwise he's not going to be in the office till after the first of the year. Okay, okay. I will work with Becky and Todd and uh, go from there. Thank you. Yeah, as I understand it, he's they're going down to move him back the second week in December. And I believe he found a place to go to move into. So um, we expect him here mid-December, tentatively. Okay. But we do have his contact information and Becky will return end of this week or next week. I think next, I think you might have to wait till Monday to get to talk to Becky. No problem. I will get in touch with her next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Next on our agenda today, we have Rick Walters and Carrie Merrick from the Hillcrest Family Services for an update. Um, Rick or Carrie, are you on or available? Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. So Nick, uh, you're still available here. Is Can you do this in 10 minutes? I sure can. <laughs> We're going to cut you short otherwise, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity here to kind of talk, talk to you all about this. And thanks, Mike, for encouraging me to reach out to uh, Luann to share this with you guys. Um, so uh, for some background, um, the, what we're looking at here uh, for Jackson County is uh, the opportunity to partner with the University of Iowa through their Iowa Initiative for Sustainable Communities program. Um, many of you might, might be familiar with uh, projects we've done with this group in the past. Uh, we worked uh, a few years ago now um, with Makokata on a branding project, a community branding and logo update project, uh, as well as the kind of a community marketing plan. Um, we also worked on the Jackson County Tomorrow Plan with urban and regional planning students, and that was looking at how to re uh, attract and retain young mm -hmm. families in the county. So we've done done a variety of projects with this group before, but they've uh, kind of changed the emphasis of the program at the university in the most recent years. And what they like to do is focus on a, a community or a, a region, in this case it would be a county, um, and do uh, a large number of diverse projects in a single school year. Um, and so 
uh, they, the program administrator reached out to, to our office because we've worked with them in the past. Um, currently this year, they're working in Manchester, just in the city of Manchester, and they're doing uh, around 15 projects. They'd be looking to do something similar in, uh, in Jackson County, and we propose that we look at a full a county approach. So not just focus on, say, Maquoketa or Bellevue or Preston, um, for all of the projects, but to see if we could spread the impact um, of their work throughout the county. And they would like to do that within the uh, next school year, so the 21-22 school year. Um, and really our hope here is that there would be an opportunity for some countywide or even regional projects um, to go along with that. I can imagine the Conservation Board has a lot of uh, uh, work that they're planning for the coming years and maybe there's an opportunity to partner with uh, the university, one of the departments within the university um, or the Historic Preservation Commission or the Historical Society. Um, obviously there's some great opportunities uh, to partner with the university uh, and their various departments on projects that they're focused on too. Um, I did share, I believe, some links to their website that sh shows the projects that they've done in the past, some pictures, and, and it should show you um, a little bit about the diversity of projects that they hope to achieve, but just uh, they've kind of, like I said, they've kind of reformulated this program. Um, they are now a little bit more uh, prescriptive about how many of each type of project they want to do. So, um, for instance, they want a couple of planning projects. So those might be things like housing needs assessments, um, trails planning, those kind of things, hazard mitigation work. Um, other, other projects that they want to do are around five engineering projects. So that could be, you know, whether you're looking at a uh, preliminary engineering for a rehab project on a building or say preliminary engineering for a site site plan um, like we did in in Bellevue with the engineering students um, on a potential uh, housing development those type of projects they also want to do a couple of film projects which um, is unique I know Makokata uh, in the past worked with the university on a documentary on the um, the downtown fire um, that it, uh, and the impact on the, the firemen in the community um, and kind of uh, help document that for historical purposes. So uh, those type of projects. Um, a, uh, a law project, um, working with the, the College of Law at the university. Um, one of those things, uh, for instance, was ECIA worked with uh, the College of Law on proposing new legislation um, around uh, the land banks. And then um, one public art project and one marketing project. And uh, a public art project, um, for instance, was like what was done in uh, Maquoketa uh, just recently with that mural in the downtown. Um, so obviously they took public input, partnered with a private uh, property owner to secure a place, and then um, did the actual art project itself. Um, there is a cost for this, this program, um, it's $50,000, um, obviously, you know, 15 uh, planning and, and engineering projects uh, uh, are certainly worth that price tag and, and the ability to work with the um, uh, experts in those fields at the, at the university. Um, but, but really our hope here is to spread the impact as well as the cost um, throughout uh, the communities. So we've met, our office has met preliminarily with um, uh, City of Bellevue uh, officials, the administrator and the mayor, um, and in Preston, both the administrator and the mayor, and in uh, Maquoketa we met with uh, uh, the manager, city manager, as well as some other staff um, to discuss this and whether they'd be interested. And we got a yes from all of them. Um, so we're reaching out to, to all of you to see if that's uh, also the, the direction you'd like to go. If you'd like to be um, a part of that, we have a um, conference call with the program administrator this Friday 
um, to say, hey, we've gotten positive signs or uh, signals from our uh, public partners um, and are looking to move forward here, but what do we need to know? Um, when do we need to commit? Um, because it'll come down obviously to some financial commitments that all of the public partners are gonna have to put in their upcoming budgets. So I kind of spit all of that out as quickly as I could, um, but if, so if, do I you have any questions, Mike? I do, yeah. I guess my, my biggest question, I would like to take a better look, I guess, at some of the project uh, and maybe some of the links that you, I really didn't dive into some of them links you have done. Um, sure. Again, I guess the price tag comes with, with the price. So uh, right. that price comes down as more participants that we have. So I guess right. I'd like to have more commitments, I guess, like you say, somebody's going to commit. I, I'd like to know how many we have. Do we have 10 commitments? Do we have three? There's there's quite a difference to that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, and 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 part of what we're what we're proposing is that, you know, the cost, like I said, the spreading out the cost, it would be sort of pro rata based on how many projects would be, say, within Makokita, the city of Makokita, or organizations within Makokita. So perhaps, uh, you know, you can see an arts organization might be interested in partnering with. Um, <clears throat> the university's art program on a, on a specific project, and in which case they would provide um, the, the necessary match um, to, to secure that project. Um, so some, what I didn't say is some projects are year long projects, some projects are only semester projects. So, you know, it kind of complicates if you're looking at how much a cost for a single project is, um, you know, obviously, semester-long project shouldn't cost as much as a, a year-long project. But yes, Mike uh, and Jack and Larry, we we will definitely bring back more information as it relates to, you know, is is Makoka to Bellevue and Preston interested in um, enough projects to really make make it um, spread out the cost, uh, and then how many might the county or departments within the county be interested in? I guess my second question also is, is there an overlap here? Is some of these things, yeah. um, is there some of these things, uh, what we should be doing already, like our C Jackson County Community Foundation, uh, Jackson County Economic Alliance, uh, our chambers, or they should be doing these types of things anyway, or some of it particular, looking into that? Well, so, in so within our office, we've had discussions. We likely will um, take on a project ourselves with the university. So we'll we'll be paying for um, whatever that cost ends up being, uh, whether it's a semester or year long project, we haven't quite figured out. Uh, but yeah, and a couple of the ideas we're looking at are taking a look at uh, perhaps a, the mix of businesses we have now, allowing us to to work with the university students to target potential new businesses that would complement um, the existing business and industry we have in the county. And that'll allow us to, to target prospects more um, effectively. So yeah, there, there are some opportunities with our uh, existing organizations might be able to partner on projects themselves and, and fund that part of the, the collaboration. Okay, well, I appreciate the explanation. Does anybody have any questions for Nick? I guess, yeah, I'd like a little more time to uh, see what comes out of Friday's uh, meeting that you have and maybe touch base with us again, uh, where we might be and how many participants that we have locked yeah, in, I wanna say. I guess that's the key to our participation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're not ready to throw 45,000 out there, you know, that's well, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. Well, and, and I guess, so from, from my perspective, if there are, maybe reach out with it, with your department heads, um, or if any of you have projects that you have an interest in, um, that might be the opportunity there. If, if say the county isn't necessarily, um, you know, doesn't see the need for an engineering project in, in that time period, then maybe they don't have, have to participate you know, either financially or actually with, with the university students. I just wanted to make sure, and I appreciate Mike, you, you uh, prompting me, but I wanted to make sure that the county was aware of the opportunity here to, to be a part of this. 
Yeah, and that's and that's kind of uh, again when you say an engineering project, uh, I guess we're in a dilemma a little bit right now, or in a transition, I should say. You yeah. know, so we're transitioning to a new engineer, and we have a part-time engineer um, hired that does a lot of uh, designing for us. So mm -hmm. and engineering, so we're we're following through with that. You know, again in our transition. So hopefully that all works out for us and uh, in a positive yeah. manner. We certainly like to keep abreast of it. So if you would just keep us uh, updated of participation and what you hear from Friday's input. I will do that. All right, have a great day, Nick. Yep, you too. Yep. Okay, so. I still don't see the other two people on there. Rick or Carrie, are they participating today? Yeah, I forwarded the agenda to them yesterday. Is there a contact number that that you have? Um, we'll take a short recess at this time. Okay, we are back. Welcome everyone again. And we will reconvene at this time. I was looking for the right word. <laughs> <laughs> I stumped me for a minute. Help me out. Up there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we are joined by Carrie Merrick and uh, Lynn Bopes. Um, from, Carrie is from Hillcrest Family Services. And Lynn, of course, is our local mental health disability coordinator. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, with us today is Carrie Merrick from Hillcrest. Um, she is the clinical director of the Makokata office based out of the Dubuque Hillcrest office. Also with us was hopefully going to be Rick Walters, but I understand that he had a conflict on his schedule and is on a conference call with SAMHSA, the federal agency which is actually providing the funding for the behavioral health clinic. So Carrie is going to give us an update on the status of services available to Jackson County residents through the Makokata Office of Hillcrest, and hopefully also can discuss a little bit about the um, new service available through the Behavioral Health Clinic. Carrie, it's all yours. Thank you. Well, thanks Hi. for having me. Hi there. Um, yeah, um, I will talk a little bit about we are currently doing out of our Makokata office and then also how we are expanding with some new grant funding. So um, it's just an exciting time. So perfect time to be speaking with all of you. So if you're familiar with our Makokata Mental Health Center, it's on South Olive Street. And we currently provide outpatient therapy and outpatient medication management services. And we also have integrated health home care out of that office. If you're not familiar with IHH, it's um, case management um, service that helps link uh, people to resources and supports in the community, um, helps them coordinate medical and behavioral health care appointments. So we have one full-time licensed social worker out of that office who she's also a certified play therapist. So she sees kids and adults for therapy. We have a, a psychiatrist there and we are also onboarding um, a part-time psychiatric nurse practitioner as well to assist with our medication management um, services. So, um, and we will likely be hiring another uh, full-time social worker here soon. So we're growing a little bit. We've downsized in the last year, but starting to grow again, which is really exciting. So um, we have our therapy medication and IHH services currently going on. What's really exciting for us is in March, we received a grant called CCBHC. I don't know if anyone is familiar with what that is. It is, stands for Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinic. And these exist not only through the state of Iowa, but throughout the country. And it's a, quite a massive grant that allows us to serve more individuals, those who are underinsured or even without insurance. So we can open our doors a lot wider um, to serve people in the community that normally wouldn't be able to be served. So they can get all of our current services, therapy, medication, um, our IHH services. And with this new grant, we are dipping our toes into substance use disorder treatment as well. It's part of the grant. So we will be having a certified addiction and drug counselor 
on site in Makokota about once a week to start off with. She'll be doing um, evaluations, she'll do outpatient, and, and likely be evolving into doing some groups as well. And it's my understanding she's working um, somewhat in alignment with ASAC as well to try to partner how we can um, work together to provide these services and not necessarily compete, but just you know work together as partners. So um, we know that's always a need and a growing need. So we're excited about adding that to our menu of services. And um, we also are expanding in the direction of primary care. We are currently finalizing hiring a family nurse practitioner there in Makokoda. That's also part of the CCBHC grant. So um, sounds like she might be starting in the next three weeks um, to provide the primary care. Again, what's really exciting is this is a service that's available to anyone, even without funding or without insurance. Um, and we have an outreach coordinator person as well hired for this program to help get that message out, to go out to um, agencies and churches and other resources, uh, organizations to um, educate about this new grant, um, to find those individuals that need the service. At the beginning of all this, we, we talked about, you know, uh, going under the bridges and look for people that don't know where to go for help. And maybe they don't go because they don't think they can get the help because they don't have funding. They don't have the resources. So, um, so I she guess that is my question, Carrie, maybe, and Lynn both. How do we get this info out to the public to say that these services are available? Do, uh, do we work with hospice hand in hand or do we, is that not, uh, I guess I, I, how I do think we, a half hour show on the radio would be a great place to start. Yeah, just talk maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we're open to all ideas. You, you know your community in Jackson County um, well, so, you, so um, we're, we're happy to hear ideas. Right now, Nicole, that's our, Nicole Harms is our outreach coordinator. Um, according to Rick, she's um, meeting and greeting with agencies, service providers, shelters, food banks, and churches. Um, to let them know about this um, program. But if there's other ideas from this group, um, we are happy to hear them because that is one of our priorities is to get the word out of this program. We also have some, um, you, we have, we just launched some radio ads that will be on KM, is it KMAQ radio there. So, oh. um, yep, so we're um, advertising that way, but we are happy to do outreach, come to speak to groups, um, and so, yeah, if you have direction or uh, um, ideas on that, we're happy to, we'd be happy to hear. I, well, very, yeah. I would have is, um, did you say your name is Nicole? You, Nicole. Mm -hmm. um, Nicole? If she can me, we can follow up on one of the suggestions that just came here, and that's being on a local half hour radio program on KMAQ. But also I'd like to um, network with her in the region's crisis system. And um, because it's important that those two programs will be familiar with each other. And then also, I would just be interested in talking to her about who she's been able to contact to date and who else we might want to direct her to. That would be really helpful. We're, you know, um, we're very excited about this expansion and, and we want people to take advantage of this service because um, we, we know we'll be able to reach more people than we ever have. So, um, so Lynn, would you like me to send you her contact information as a start? That'd be great, thanks. Yeah, yep. And I yeah, know it's, Rick, great, it's great to know that this services, these services are available, but we need to get it out there so people know it. Uh, and yeah. I think it'd be great if when she's on board, if she would come to the board meeting mm -hmm. and we would have an opportunity to really understand further what all she's gonna be involved with. And we do have a lot of listeners. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah. We, we, <laughs> So I guess one of the questions I have, uh, Carrie, is, is this service already up and running and are the doors open? Absolutely. So um, Rick could speak a little better to the referral process, but honestly, um, it's a, just a call to our Makokata Mental Health Center and we'll start the process from there. Um, we, we have some workflows in place already. If they just call and say, I, I just need help and I don't know where to go, we, we take it from there and um, we'll, We'll get them, we'll link them with the services that, um, you know, are assessed to be needed and 
um, and again, we have um, the funding there. So absolutely, it is up and running. And what are the hours? Is it five days a week, um, only part-time? So it's, a, it's in alignment with our mental health center hours, which is Monday through Friday, um, eight to five. And, um, but we do have, we're um, working in alignment with the mobile crisis team down in Jackson County as well. So that service um, is part of the CCBHC, but we're not providing it. It's just gonna be currently run as it is in Maquoketa. Um, now, when you say the mobile crisis outreach team, is that the one offered through the Eastern Iowa MHBS region, or is it a team specific to the Hillcrest agency? It's your Jack, you have a Jackson County crisis team, correct? Um, yes, run for foundation too? That are available and one of the services is actually mobile crisis outreach. Mm -hmm. And that's through Robert Young. Through Robert Young, Robert Young provided by foundation too. Yep. Um, has no Cole been in conversation already then with the Robert Young Center or crisis team, do you know? Rick has, yep, Rick Walters Rick. has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So it sounds like we need to do a little bit of networking here together with uh, Lynn and Rick and, and, and Nicole, uh, kind of touching base and working through what's available and what and how and, mm -hmm. and then explaining it to us. <laughs> well, the only way we can get the story out is if we know what the story is. Absolutely. And, and I was aware of the program and kind of anticipating that Rick might reach out to do some of this networking. So. Um, it'll be important that Nicole and I get together as soon as possible and start those conversations. Absolutely. Yep. So can you give the location of the clinic? So it'll be located right in our um, Maquoketa Mental Health Center. Again, it's just really an expansion of what we're already doing to include the SUD services, primary care, and again, just be able to serve more people than we currently are because again, underinsured, without insurance, so, but it's currently located within our mental, our mental health center already there in Maquoketa. And so for and we'll people that might not be familiar where that is, it is in the city of Maquoketa and it's on South Olive Street at 115 and 117 South Olive, I believe. Do you know, do you have just one address now or is it still two separate addresses? Although it's it, in the it, same building. Yep, it actually we moved to the other side of the building. Our, our address is the one, 117 South Olive Street. So that's the address for both the mental health center now and the CD, the behavioral health clinic. Okay. Yep. Yep. And that so that clinic will serve all of Jackson County. Uh, that was my next question. Will it serve our mental health region? As you're aware, is five counties. Most closest to us is Clinton County, which is actually what three to five miles south of right. the city mm -hmm. of Maquoketa. Yeah. So is the clinic available to residents of other counties? besides Jackson? So we've had some discussion about that and, and Rick's answer would be that typically, yes, we, we can work through the logistics of that. I don't wanna make too many guarantees. Our grant allows us to serve those in Jackson County and actually Dubuque County as well. So we're doing this in Dubuque County. Um, because we're in the tri-state area up here in Dubuque, we did have somebody from Illinois come over. So that's where the discussion started. So um, my answer would be is no guarantees, but Rick has been able to find some logistics there, how um, um, even if they're outside of Jackson County, and I would have to look at kind of case by case probably, but it is limited for the most part to Jackson County. Okay. So are you gonna do a news release to the well, we have the Maquoketa paper, the Bellevue paper, and the Preston Times. I mean, I think it would be great to be interviewed by the newspapers and kind of give, tell them the story and what's available so that people have an opportunity to see and read that. That's a, thank you. Yep, that's a great idea. I don't think we have done that quite yet. And in addition, Jack, I would add um, the Telegraph Herald and the Clinton Herald in particular. I was thinking there was an article a while back about Hillcrest getting some of this funding? Yes, in the TH. Yes. Yeah, there was. Yes, it, 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 there was. I'm um, sure I read it back then and I was excited. <laughs> right, so now I think we need to uh, do the marketing the next step and give the actual details. I agree. What's available, when it's available, how you access it, those kinds of things. The TH, I think, covers a lot of uh, residents from our county in the northern part. And the Clinton Herald in the south. Yeah, because of where we're located. We're 
So I think those are two other important media outlets. Is there anything that Clinton County offers that's not here that would kind of be included in that announcement? That or, Clinton County offers? Yeah. Do they have a, the same setup as what we have here? Um, Clinton County actually does have a federally qualified community health plan. Is that the Bridgeview? No, no. The Bridgeview is Bridgeview a community is mental health center. They, in addition, have a federally funded what's called a community health clinic, which provides more of your primary care physician and specialty physical care. Okay. The mental health component is of services in Clinton County is available primarily through Bridgeview and then a couple of other private providers. But in terms of a behavioral health clinic like this, that is considered to be all comprehensive, meaning it, it pulls in that primary care physician component that um, Carrie talked about, as well as um, assisting with individuals that have mental health and substance abuse concerns, which is a high prevalence of that. And then having the community care coordinator, all of those different aspects are what makes this a federally funded behavioral health plan. Okay. So it is unique, I would say, um, to the Clinton Jackson area. Okay. Well, it's what I've heard is all good news. <laughs> I think, like I said, as long as we can network and market the services that are available, um, get the public involved, they're knowledgeable about what could be available to them. I think mm -hmm. it's really exciting as far as that goes is I think we utilize the service what we have, you know, that's the thing to do if you can utilize it. If it's available and you get this grant money is a wonderful thing, but if we don't utilize it, what good does it do us? You know? Absolutely. Yep, so so there's, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Carrie. Oh, well, and, and I spoke to this a little bit earlier, but yeah, there's, I know Lynn, when you and I met with, with Rick and um, Joey that day uh, a month or so ago, you know, if there's, if there's uh, places that you identify would be good for us to really even physically go on site to speak about this, um, we'd love to learn and, and know what those places are. So just to Mike's point, yeah, they, uh, we know a lot of repetition seems to help with educating about this program. Um, um, just, just getting getting people excited about it, letting know the process to make a referral. So if you ha again, if you you know that um, this would be a good place for us to show up and and do a presentation, we're happy to do that and happy to know where those places are. Sure. Um, can we just talk very briefly to the board about the the money being available? It's a two year grant, from what I understand. It is a two year grant, and my understanding of this is Rick's program. So uh, I'll I'll I. I I feel I know it fairly well, but um, my understanding of it is it, if, if we do it well for two years, it's something we can be reaccredited for and continue. Um, I know Abbey Center in Cedar Rapids has been running a CCBHC now for, um, gosh, they're maybe in their third or some plus year. So they, they did this years ago, started off with a two year grant, did it well, and was able to continue and firm it up and, and, and keep it as an ongoing um, program. So that's our hope. And I believe the grant amount was like $1.8 million each year for two years. Is that correct? Sounds, yes. In that ballpark? Yes. And I, I'm not sure when the grant year started. Do you know that it start prior, like an October 1st, like a federal fiscal year grant? Or I know you mentioned you were awarded it in March. Right, we had to be up and running August 31st. Oh, okay. So you're already several months into the first year. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we need to get this out there to the. Amen. Yeah, we need to get this information available. So, yeah. So if uh, if Nicole can get with uh, Lynn, get some ideas. I I I just local EMS systems, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, I, I don't know if that helps somehow. If we can oh, have absolutely. It. The yeah. local hospital. Um, because anybody who's familiar with it, then if they come into contact with somebody having a crisis or any kind of an emergency, they can at least share this information and give the mm -hmm. contact information. Law enforcement? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
No, I will look forward to getting Nicole's information and I will reach out to her uh, today, hopefully. Yet, so I will send it to you soon. Yep, right after I get off the call. We're excited to see that there's going to be some additional help. Mm -hmm. It'll be wonderful. If you're going to do that right away, we don't want to keep you. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> any other, well, unless there's any other questions, um, happy to answer. It was nice meeting you. We are excited to hear about it and make sure you call the newspaper and get on CAMA. Cam yeah, we want you on CAMA too. Yeah, just talk, they call, call it. Call Sherry so. Melvold at CAMA Q. <laughs> I'll share that with Nicole. Yeah. Okay. Thank it you is, everyone. It is, it is a popular uh, show and they, uh, and there's a lot of people listen to it. What's the, And what was her name again? I'm sorry. Sherry Melvold. Okay. Good to and know. Thank you. LD. And it's called Just Talk. The Just Talk program. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. And again, yeah, it was nice to meet you and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see more of each other. And Wonderful. Thanks everyone. Oh. The Maquoketa newspaper and the Bellevue Herald Leader are owned by the same company. Okay. The Preston Times would be a separate one. And of course, you know about the Telegraph Herald and probably about the Clinton Herald. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very helpful. Thank you. Oh, yep, thanks, Gary. Yeah, yep, thank you. Bye. Okay, Lynn. Well, I appreciate you uh, following up with that. That's that's good news. He wants to he wants to talk about his four hour meeting. We don't want. Uh, well, it's not it's not on this agenda, but you know, um, uh, we did have our review of applications yesterday, mm -hmm. which was uh, I don't know how you, as the management team, could set through that thing twice, <laughs> or or longer more than that, but. Um, uh, I just, I, I was really frustrated mm -hmm. yesterday. I think you could probably tell. Well, I appreciate your persistence at advocating for some of those applications where it was pretty clear that they were requesting for things that were specifically the result of needing to make adaptations to COVID. Absolutely. And when we look at that, I know there was concern about are we really um, focusing on individuals with disabilities? But I think in the COVID crisis, what we all have to look at is a more global picture. Any one of us are susceptible to suffering from mental health related kinds of conditions, whether it's anxiety, depression, whatever. We don't know in that audience of schools, for, in, if, for example, both students and staff, which one of those staff or students are gonna be impacted adversely in regards to their mental health. And so I think to, you know, we're trying to prevent and intervene for all students because we are all susceptible to needing some kind of support during this COVID. But, and that's, I think, what you were trying to accomplish. I, I, I guess the thing that bothered me the most is how um, there was no flexibility. No, no. And um, in this, with this crisis, there's got to be some flexibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, as I said several times, the main thing is trying to keep those kids safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just felt like some of them just were walking out the door. Yeah. And you know, I I I I just I could hardly tolerate it. Well, at I, at this stage of the game, I I guess there's a there's a large responsibility for everyone to listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read in one of the governing magazines, I think it was three or four days ago, that long term that 20% of the individuals that were touched by this are going to have mental issues. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So Without I mean, that, that it's it, in different aspects, whatever right. it may be. So there's, there's a, it's a learning curve for all of us. And I think it's a listening process that everybody, we all need to go through. You know? well, I, I, I can't know, imagine what I, you guys I are. really know people that are afraid to go out of their house. Oh, yeah. yeah. They yeah, don't exactly. want to go out of their house because they don't want to get the COVID. They don't want to die. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I, I just guess from our meeting yesterday, um, I just thought we kind of, some of us, some of them kind of lost 
direction. Yeah. And um, and Jack fought hard to have them reconsider and look at things differently. And um, in general, some of them were not very really receptive. They were pretty set in their firm delineation of what the money should be used for. So I applaud you for hanging in there. I guess one of the things that at the end of the meeting, when they talked about the uh, IEPs. Oh, yeah. I really think we need to talk to our school system and say, please consider applying. Yeah. Well, you know, I do know. Um, so this last round was sent out to all the school districts within our mental health region. And as Jack found out, learned yesterday from Superintendent Hoover, the schools have had access to other sources of money as well. And so some of the school districts have been pretty cautious about making sure they're not duplicating federal funds to offset the costs that they've experienced. And so because there are rules and guidelines and if the school system takes money from us and has the money in another pocket or another bucket, um, they might have to pay some of that back. Mm -hmm. Right. When right. they're when yeah. they're and so and I was telling them before that yeah. you know the management team went through these applications kind of narrow down what would be acceptable, what mm -hmm. wouldn't be acceptable, so that when it came to us, it was our option to trim it a little more if we right. so desired. But um, I just think, I was just amazed at some of the requests and yeah. some of the denials. I just, but. Yeah. Well, and that's something we have to work through, you know, I guess, and, and uh, I certainly commend you for having that lengthy of a conversation with whoever it may be. <laughs> um, it's so what do we have? It can be four or twenty five. Twenty seven and twenty seven And to get that many another one. And to get yeah, get that many applications yeah. and then they get to everybody to agree is another process. Well when you look at the lowest one I think was one thousand six hundred and ten. Yeah. And the highest one was three hundred and eighty six something. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and eighty six thousand. <laughs> Wow. But you're also looking at districts that are very small. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Quad City School Districts, for yeah. example, the yeah. Davenport sure. School District. So just by volume of students and the, their requests are going to look very differently in terms of dollar amounts on paper. Mm -hmm. But then in the book, they're also serving, you know, a, dis a yeah. disparity in the number of students. So, yeah. Yeah. This so is one of the things we discussed at the beginning of our session was um, are we only supposed to be using this money for people that, for the, for the children that really have mental issues? Or, and I, I guess my consensus was, and I think it ended up being the consensus of the group, is it has a mental effect on everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't just pinpoint one child against 10 others because they're all living through it. Right. Yeah. And they all have the stress. Mm -hmm. They all either they're either being taught virtually or they're being taught face to face, but it still causes stress. Or loss loss mm -hmm. of a loved one or whatever it may be. And, yeah. and it's not only stressful for them, but it's stressful for their parents or whoever is responsible for those children. And you have to look all of that. You can't just look at one 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 person. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I don't know, I just, you know, and some schools had to, I mean, all schools probably had to do this to some extent. They physically had to buy, say, individual chairs to get away from table setups in their classrooms so that they could socially distance the students in the classroom. That was one example that was given by one district. And was that an acceptable Well, that was from Scott. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them that they, oh, they yeah. didn't want them at tables. They wanted them. Right. separated socially because that's what the governor and that's what everybody says mm -hmm. you're right. supposed to have social distancing and yet that wasn't good enough reason right for some of them yeah i know yeah. thanks hard to differentiate in some of that so mm -hmm. we yeah. sure appreciate the work you're doing there both of you well and i will work with Hillcrest to well that's a that's an exciting news you know mm -hmm. i mean for it's you to, whatever news you can whatever information you can get out of nicole and and how many people know that this office is down in 117 i'm going to drive by because i you, you right know. across from her right across <laughs> oh, the the Rosenberg, 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 Rosenberg. that makes mm -hmm. sense
Yeah. So yeah. I'm, and the mental health center has been there since um, 2001, 2002. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. When we moved from the hospital wow. um, to that location. And that's where DHS originally was located as well. They were in part of the building and the yeah. mental health center in the other part. So that's why I asked about two separate addresses because at one time there were two separate agencies in the same building. Um, and they had, we had different addresses when I worked with the mental health center. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lynn. Thank, Thank you, you for the yep. job well yes. done. Uh, where is my agenda? Okay, we are. Rick and Carrie, uh, we have a budget work session scheduled. Oh, Galaxy? Yeah. Your Galaxy, it says. You know what? I'm going to unmute you. How's that? Oh, you're still muted. I'm gonna, um... She could probably, uh, there, there she did. Let's see if we can hear Lanny. There I am. There you are. Okay. There says, I am. It doesn't say Lanny, I'm just telling you. <laughs> well, that's okay. I am the whole galaxy down here. <laughs> you go up, you got to go up to participants and put change in it. <laughs> Oh, no, okay, that would mean a little bit beyond my technology. You're just lucky you got me this way so I can talk to you. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, we are here for a uh, budget work session with you. Is that correct? I'm, I was told that, yes. <laughs> so, what do you have so for us? Well, unfortunately, this is too early in the year for me to bring you or give you any of our state um, information like I always do, all of those facts and figures. Um, yep. I will, however, tell you the economic impact of the fair continues to, uh, or the fairgrounds. Uh, continues to affect the the county and the city for the mere fact that um, we just had a dog show here that had people from multiple states as in like over 16. So um, yes, it's mostly hotels and gas and restaurants, but it's hotels and gas and restaurants. And they are picking up information, the Tourism Association and the Makokota Chamber and the Bellevue Chamber all provided information to the people that came so that they learn about Jackson County. Yep, and it sure is trying times for you, I suppose, and all your other workers. And Yeah, yeah, and we're, we're hanging in here the best we can and trying to keep everybody safe as best we can. And I think, honestly, we're doing a pretty good job of it. We agree. So I guess at this time there was really nothing for us to, to discuss as far as the budget goes. Um, please keep us in mind. If you got any extras, we could all use roofs around <laughs> here. <laughs> Get in line. And I and and that's why I don't I don't ask and I request because I know that you guys have given to us most generously the past couple three four years and will continue to support the the 4-H kids with our yearly stipend that you have and you know guys thanks so much for what you've done for us and thank you and your staff yes. okay. We're, we're also, as we've stated in the past, we're extremely proud of the fairgrounds and, and what your, you and your staff do down there. And, um, you know, we always are interested in what your needs are. We might not be able to fulfill all the needs, but we still need to know what your plans are for the future. Well, um, actually, we're starting a, a next spring. We'll have a golfing range or a driving range set up in the back 40. Um, <laughs> just another way to try to uh, get some income here. And I've always thought that that space was not used as best as possible. And so our, our new uh, groundskeeper came up with this idea. And so we've got that developed. 
and um, are in the process of de developing and hopefully will open up in the spring. And um, we're, the horse arena had been moved this year and that looks um, looking good and uh, area horse shows um, have used it a couple of times and are planning on coming back. Like I said, um, the AKC dog show is looking at coming back to us. Again, the wood carvers are looking to come back to us. They love our grounds and our facilities. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting quite the reputation out there. And with the addition of the new building, uh, with the extension offices here, I can only see us going forward and being a positive contribution to the county. I agree. Thanks, Lanny. All right. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so uh, we've talked to Nick, which was on our agenda at 11. So that's over with. Any board or commission report? I know Jack reported there. Um, any unfinished business? When are we going to get together with um, Brent and um, John to discuss the floor plan of the jail and see what we're, if it's exactly how we want it? how if he's got any suggestions i don't know um when he first looked at the floor plan he thought maybe there maybe there were some things he had questions about but i think we need to do that so that we can move forward and get everything ready for our your final thing. flyer that we're going to send out to the public and get everything make sure that i agree that's gonna knows. that's gonna be here before I mean, we know it uh, you know, i know that it's, john it's almost the end of november yeah i, I know that john had reached out to Brent, I believe, after the election. Um, okay. He asked me for his contact number anyway, and and hopefully they, they had the conversation that uh, going forward, um, I, I certainly can get a hold of Brent and see if, or John both, and see if we can get together sometime. Yeah, see if we can set that up. What's the Oh, I'm not sure. It, should, it, it should be almost, yeah. I would think. When you know, there. I wouldn't mind going up, if that's the case, going up and maybe take a tour, if I'm sure uh, Jeff would love to take us through it. Jeff said he would. Yeah. Anytime we wanted to come. Well, you said it was similar to. Well, it's a similar size yeah. of ours. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need to. Do, do you have Jeff's contact, Jack? Maybe you want to touch base with Jeff and see if there's a time or time we could go and, and take a road trip and go through it unless we want to each do it personally i, I think I will, it would be easier I, i'll be with ecia tomorrow and jeff is on that okay so, so i'll talk to him and see if we can set up a time and maybe and then, even uh you know maybe we surely. can touch out touch base with uh yeah. brent and see if he's available too yeah. at some point yeah. maybe we can touch oh, yeah. base that'd be good to have him see if brent's and what his schedule is i don't know what his schedule is yeah. Well, like I said, I wanted to put it on a trailer and bring it back here. <laughs> it ain't that easy. I know. I take more than a trailer. Uh, yeah. uh, just an update on the care facility a little bit. We are. Um, we have a couple other names that Marty was going to take up and get some concrete bids on. Um, the county has agreed to, for fee, of course, um, move some dirt for us there. Some of that that all been sealed for them, they're gonna make a nice pile for that. So Marty and and uh, Jared, is it Jared? Yeah, Jared mm -hmm. can work with and, and get that septic system smoothed out somewhat and where we pulled them trees out last year. So that's going forward. Nice to know that that's in process. I believe they're gonna repair that dike and put a drain tube so that there's a drain tube in the dike so it don't right. wash out again. So hopefully that's okay with everyone that's yep. maintenance that needs that's, to be i think that's important yeah. to do maintenance that Make needs sure to be done so. yeah well <laughs> yeah well, we're talking 12 inch tube anyway so that should take there's, i don't know how many acres flow into that but there's not that many but there's yeah so that's just maintenance that was due otherwise um, see you have some interesting issues on your Conservation Board meeting this evening. I appreciate the minutes and the info we get oh, in the I mail. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's good information and uh, needs to be out there. And yeah, we had a meeting 
Oh, is that two weeks ago now? <laughs> Out here, Prairie Creek. Yeah, and um, the guy from Des Moines was here with the USDA. Yeah. They can't really do any lake areas, but they do like lower the banks down. So you got a flood plain to, to slow the water down and stuff. So um, kind of looked at that. I gave him the tour of the park when we went over the old mill and showed him how that was set up and mm -hmm. stuff. So that's good information. And everybody was changing numbers and stuff. So uh, Gerald was there. There's with the city project, the Main Street project, they get a 10% rebate for flood litigation for the area, which is $1.2 million. So, and that can be used for projects throughout the city or in the park, any, anything to help the water quality of the Mokogata River. So that's, oh, wow. yeah, wow, Great. that's a lot wow. of money that's yeah. there. So, mm -hmm. and even, I mean, there's other grant money out there too, so. Well, that's what we certainly need to check yeah. into, whatever's available to us, and mm -hmm. if we can match or whatever we may be able to do is to move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all that, can, I mean, the water quality is the main thing, but if they can, if it includes recreation or, you know, uh, just anything that would be, bring more people to the county and right. yep. different things like that. So that's yeah. exciting. To, you yes, know, it is. That. Yeah. Uh, Any other? Business before the board this morning. I would move we adjourn. I would second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone for attending and have a great day and week. Stay safe and healthy.